okay so let's move on to the next part of the uh, discussion where we discuss what is called as direct preference optimization the motivation for this algorithm is as follows now in the ppo algorithm we have to first try the reward model and based on the reward model we would use uh, the ppo or the policy gradient algorithm to update the policy now the quality of uh, the uh, policy updates that are obtained using uh, ppo kind of algorithms policy gradient algorithms depends heavily on the performance of the reward model because i mean it's it's obvious because the objective function of policy gradient theorem for policy gradient algorithms is to maximize the uh, expected reward which means that the expected reward now is estimated using the reward model and the goodness of uh, these algorithms depends extremely on the reward model that's that's one the second thing is that <coughs> training a good reward model needs solving this optimization problem that we just saw which itself is computationally expensive now the question that is asked in uh, dpo direct preference optimization is that is there a way in which we can completely bypass uh, the reward model but still do a policy uh, optimization using the preferential data that is given okay so let us write it down so now the goal here is to optimize the policy optimize the policy uh, in our case it is the language model using the preferential data using the preferential data without the reward model suppose you do not have a reward model can you still optimize the policy the language model policy without having uh, a reward model is the question that uh, is being answered in the uh, the framework that are uh, I mean, that is called the direct preference optimization so let us look at it now recall that the constrained policy update policy optimization objective is as follows policy optimization objective is given by the following equation this equation is suggesting that the objective function that we would use to find the policy has to be the one that would maximize the reward with a constraint that the kl divergence between the policy that is being optimized and another policy <coughs> which is called the reference policy has to be minimized okay so now there is a negative sign here because the reward has to be maximized while the kl divergence has to be minimized now this this looks very similar to the ppo objective uh, that we saw where the kl divergence was put uh, put as an additional constraint now the constraint optimization problem can be converted into an unconstrained optimization problem via the grangian okay this is what is done so this is equivalent to maximizing the reward constrained to the fact that the kl divergence between pi theta and pi reference has to be minimized so i have written that in a in an unconstrained form by writing out the lagrangian and beta ha happens to be the lagrangian coefficient okay now why is this important this is important because one can show that the okay let us write down the optimization problem now the optimal parameters that or rather the optimal policy is the one let's call this as pi star is the one that would maximize we are searching over all policies which would maximize l policy okay which is a function of uh, policies right this is what the optimization problem is now what can be shown is that 
it can be shown let's give the proof it can be shown that the optimal policy that would solve the above objective function is given by 1 by z okay let us uh, write this as pi star of y given x y for the response and x for the input so it is given by 1 by uh, zx pi ref y given x times e power 1 by beta which is the Lagrangian constraint times r phi x comma y okay this is also called the Boltzmann distribution where z of x is the normalization constant which is given by uh, integral over um, some over all responses pi ref y comma x times e power note that since we are uh, summing or integrating out the responses uh, the z will only be a function of the inputs x okay right so what is now shown is that for this problem that we would want to solve it can be analytically shown that the optimal policy that we are seeking is given by this particular expression which is uh, a Boltzmann distribution where zx is the normalization constant. Now this means that an optimal policy can be found out if we were given uh, the reference policy and if we were able to compute if we are able to compute the normalization constant. But it turns out that uh, the normalization constant is not tractable because summing over all possible uh, responses is not possible okay therefore so however however pi star of y given x can't be computed because z of x is, is not tractable z of x is not tractable so now what do we do about it now while uh, one cannot find out uh, the true policy optimal policy analytically this can be used to get an expression for the reward model so that is the advantage of uh, this sort of a formulation what can be shown is that if you just take the log of the above expression okay this can be shown to be equal to log of i'll skip the algebra the interest of time so this is log of pi ref y given x minus log of uh, z of x which is the normalization constant plus 1 over beta r phi x comma y right this is easy to show now if we rearrange the terms rearranging the terms will give us r phi which is the the optimal reward that would lead to the optimal policy as beta times log of pi star y given x divided by pi ref y given x time uh, plus beta log of c of x you now one can verify this algebra so what did we do so far is that let's call this r star for the optimal policy optimal reward model we saw that given the op optimization problem that we would want to solve there exists an analytical solution for the optimal policy and if you plug in that analytical solution for the optimal policy we get an optimal reward model which is given by this particular equation now what is this useful for is the question let us look at it now if we plug this expression if r star of v is substituted in the in the bradley terry model so remember the bradley uh, terry model that was used to 
find or model the reward model the re model we get the following so what is that so we have p of y w being greater than equal to y l is given by the sigma at e power r phi x comma y w divided by e power r phi x comma y w plus e power r phi x comma y l right so this was the uh, equation that we had now if we simply plug in let's call this as r star here substituting so let us just let me just show this in one screen so substituting r star in i'll call this as equation 1 so if i skip all the algebra what can be shown is that p of yw being greater than equal to yl can be shown to be equal to uh, log of uh, no beta times log of y theta y given x divided by pi of y given x minus beta log of pi theta y l given x your pardon this is y w y l given x divided by pi of of y l given x okay can be shown so now what happens is that what we seek is that we seek a theta or pi theta that would maximize the log of p of y w given uh, y w being greater than equal to y l right this is what we want to do because we need to maximize the likelihood of uh, y w being greater than equal to y l if we just substitute this equation the above equation in here we get our optimal policy to be the one that would maximize Uh, the expected value of log of so I think there should be a sigma here there should be a sigma here yeah so log of sigma beta times log pi theta by w given x divided by pi ref y w given x minus beta times log of pi theta by l given x divided by pi ref y l given x yeah so now if you look at this and this expectation is over the again the preferential data x comma y w comma y l so now what did we just do is that we completely if you look at this this above the above expression above expression is independent of the reward model reward function independent of the reward reward function r phi right now what did we do is that we got an an expression for the objective function that would give you the optimal policy which does not contain the reward model right so this is the objective that we started with now this is the objective function for direct preference optimization or dpo now it's called direct preference optimization because given the preferential data you can obtain the policy 
without having to explicitly compute the reward model right so this is theta ref we know theta ref which is theta old theta uh, sorry pi ref is the uh, previous uh, reference policy or the old policy pi theta is the policy that is being optimized and we have uh, yw we have yl and x all of these can be computed and therefore this objective this optimization problem can be solved using the usual gradient descent methods to align a given uh, policy or the language model uh, with the human given preferential data right so that's why this is a very powerful technique compared to ppo because in ppo one needs to train the reward model and use the reward model to get a good policy here the need for the reward model is completely bypassed and uh, a good policy or a policy or a language model can be optimized even without having access to a reward model so you don't even have to train a reward model explicitly when uh, you are using the dpo algorithm okay. right so this takes us to the end of uh, auto regressive language models and rlhf so rlhf stands for uh, reinforcement learning with human feedback so the preferential data that we get is uh, typically obtained using a human human generated feedback and that's why the method uh, these class of methods are called reinforcement learning through human feedback or rlhf however this preferential data can be obtained using uh, verifiable rewards as well where suppose you are you are, you are solving the task of uh, coding right so where x is an input code input uh, prompt which would ask you to solve a coding problem uh, there are cases where the rewards are not preferential in nature but they are verifiable in nature which means that uh, you can define the reward as, as the number of test cases that the the input code uh, the, the the output uh, code has passed in which case dpo algorithm typically does not suit because uh, dpo requires preferential data one can use uh, verifiable rewards along with uh, ppo kind of policy gradient algorithms to update the policy right so typically what happens in practice you know when you look at uh, models such as uh, gpt gemini and so on what's happening is that a base auto regressive uh, generative model which has transformers as uh, the architecture will be trained using large amounts of uh, trillions of tokens of uh, 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 unsupervised data using uh, the next token prediction technique that we saw once it is done huge amounts of preferential data is collected and uh, the model that is trained in an unsupervised way will be aligned with the human preferential data using the rl methods that we just described that completes uh, one loop of uh, how uh, these large scale language models large language models or llms are trained there are lots of uh, engineering nuances uh, that was uh, that was skipped uh, for the want of time some of them will be uh, covered in the tutorials and uh, you know, left to the students uh, uh, as exercises thank you